How's it going everyone? I'm Isaac from Shaft Games and today we are finally looking at hit scan weapons. This is a part of my FPS tutorial series on creating a FPS weapon manager system. If you haven't followed along with the last four tutorials, the playlist will be around here somewhere. So if you're looking to create an entire FPS weapon management system, this is the tutorial for you. If not, and you just want to learn hit scan, I'm sure you can still get something out of this. There's just going to be a couple of things that you won't have like the weapon resources and the animations. But other than that, you should be able to still figure out how to do a hit scan weapon. With that said, if you find this tutorial helpful at all, I do appreciate a like and subscribe. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can also jump onto the Patreon, patreon.com slash shaft games and support me there. You do get these videos in advance. So if you're looking to set up an FPS weapon management system and you don't want to wait for the week to week tutorials, then you can jump over there and access them all right now. And let's not waste any more time and jump right into the tutorial. I thought I would take some time and quickly explain how we're going to do this hit scan weapon. There's a number of different ways you can achieve this, but this is the way I like to do it. In Godot 4, there's something called a physics ray query parameter 3D. I think that's the right term. Um, and you can use that to create a ray cast from wherever you want to wherever you want. And what we are going to do is we're going to ray cast from the center of the camera out to a determined range. And if that ray intersects with something, we are going to do another ray cast from the barrel of our weapon to that object. This is an extra step just to give us a little bit more accuracy so that if there's something in between the barrel, like a box you're hiding behind some kind of object, you can't just, you know, peek out of it and shoot. You could, of course, just ray cast directly from the center of the camera and get pretty similar effects, of course. And that is not what we want to achieve here. So we're going to do two ray casts and let's get into it. So the very first thing that we need to add is a marker 3D. Uh, it could be also a node 3D, that's fine too. I'm gonna call this a bullet underscore point. And the trick here is with the animations, we're gonna move that bullet point to be right at the uh, barrel end of the gun. So I'm just gonna manipulate that into the right position for all my weapons and just key that frame in on my animation player. So you'll see I've put that there and I hit the key button on my blaster deactivate. So when the gun's activated, that marker's moved in into position. And for the deactivate, I'll also, I'll hit the reset and key it in. This is not super necessary, but I just, I think it's just a little bit better that way, just in case there's any issues. I'll come down to blaster I and I'll do the exact same thing. I'm gonna speed through this. But yeah, for every single one of your weapons, you wanna move this uh, bullet point front of the barrel where you where the bullet would come out of essentially and we're going to use this for both our hit scans and projectiles okay so after you've set up your animations right click the bullet point and select access as a unique name we'll come into our weapons manager script and we'll type on ready var bullet underscore point equals get node brackets quotation marks and then then the percentage sign and then bullet point uh, the reason i do it this way is just in case you want to move things around after you're done makes it really easy Okay, so we'll come into our weapons resources script and we're gonna add a couple of variables. First thing we want is an export flag. So that's export underscore flags and we'll do uh, one as hit scan and the other as projectile and we'll call it type. Uh, so this is a really cool thing. It'll give us an enumerator that we can use to decide uh, what kind of gun we're shooting. Uh, the next export variable is weapon range, and that'll just be an integer. It's pretty straightforward what that'll do. And then we'll have export var damage as an integer as well. And so we'll come and set these up. I'll make uh, this one here, blaster D, a hit scan weapon, and the same with blaster I, and I'll give them all 2000 range for now. Uh, we'll come back to our weapon script, and we'll create an enumerator. Um, it'll be between three. We'll do null, hit scan, and projectile. And I think you can probably see where I'm going with this. Okay, so in our shoot function, we're gonna type match current weapon dot type. 
and we'll have null just in case it's not been selected. I'm just going to put a print here and say something like weapon type not chosen and then hit scan and we'll put pass for now and then we'll also put projectile and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll just pass there. The first thing we need to do before we actually start doing our hit scan is we're going to need to get a ray cast from our camera. So I'm going to create a function called get camera collision. And we'll start working on this. We're going to just type pass so that I can set up the rest of the function and shoot. So I'll type var camera collision equals get camera collision. And so for the camera collision, we need to get access to our camera. So we can just go var camera equals get viewport get camera 3D and it's going to return the active 3D camera which is going to be the one that we're using in most cases. And then we also need to know the size of the viewport so we can uh, project the raycast from the center so we'll get viewport dot get size is the function we're going to use and we're going to have ray origin equals camera dot project ray origin and it's going to be a screen point which will be our viewport divided by two so that'll be the center okay and the other one will need to be ray end and this will be ray origin plus camera project ray normal and it'll be the viewport divided by two which will be the center again multiplied by the current weapon dot weapon underscore range so that's how far we're going to project our ray cast so we'll have the next variable, which will be a new intersection, and that'll be equal to physics ray query parameter 3D dot create. And we'll take a from vector, which will be our ray origin, a to vector, which will be our ray end. This is new in Gido 4. I'm just gonna make some space down below and uh, make this a bit wider. So that's a new function we need to call when we're ray casting. And the next thing we need to do is just get a variable for the intersection and that will be equal to get world 3 dotintersect ray and this now takes a physics ray query parameter 3D. So we'll pass in our new intersection. And then what we'll do after that is if not intersection dot is empty and we'll get the collision point and it'll be equal to intersection dot position. So that'll be the world point of the uh, actual collision and we'll return that else we'll just return the ray and this is not important for the hit scan but it will be important for the projectile so keep that in mind so no matter what we're returning a vector 3 and it's either going to be the point that we hit with our camera or just the end point okay so we can come back up to our shoot and now that we've got that point we can start working on our hit scan so we've got the function hit scan collision and I'll just type pass in there it's actually going to take a variable which will be the collision point from the camera collision function var bullet underscore direction is equal to collision point minus bullet point dot get global transform dot origin and dot normalized. And so that'll give us the direction that the, this new vector should be traveling. And we'll type var new intersection. This will be pretty similar to the one above. And that'll be equal to the same as before, physics ray query parameter 3D dot create. And the from point will be the bullet point dot get global transform dot origin and the two point will be the collision point plus the bullet direction times two. Now you give it a little bit of extra the multiplication of two is pretty much to just push it a little bit further than what you would need because what I found is if you don't do that this hit scan collision doesn't always register a hit. Okay so we'll come down with var bullet underscore collision and we'll get world 3d dot direct space state dot intersect ray which takes a physics ray query parameter 3d and we'll pass in that new intersection and now 
we'll know if we've actually hit something. So we'll go if bullet collision, print hit scan damage. And so we'll just print that out. We know we can deal damage at that point. So I'll create a function called hit scan damage. And we'll just set it to pass at the moment. And we'll set this function up, call that function under if bullet collision, just so that it's more complete. This is the exact structure we want. Okay, I'm gonna to toggle out of this and we'll come back to the world, go back to 3D. And we'll bring the editor back. And uh, I figure the box will be the best thing to work on. So let's interact with that. So I'm gonna add a group. So if you come over to node where signals are and just click the little icon that says groups, click manage groups and type target in this box here and add. Select the physics object and add and then press okay. Let's add a script. Uh, under tutorial, I create a new folder called world underscore objects. And I'll call the script physics target. And under here, I'm just gonna say bar health. We'll just give it like five. And then we'll create a function called hit underscore successful. Yeah, let's try to spell that right, hit successful. And we'll pass in the damage. And then we'll just go health minus equals damage. This is just a simple one. And then we'll check the health. If it's less than or equal to zero, then we'll key free. Nice and simple. We'll also print the health as we go, just so that we can keep track of, make sure that it's working. Okay, we'll come back over to the FPS character. And under here, where we've got our hit scan, We'll pass in the collider, which is one of the objects returned from intersect ray. So bullet collision dot collider. So we'll type if collider is in group and we'll just type target and the collider dot has method. And we'll type that method out before it was hit underscore successful. It's important to make sure that's correct, otherwise this won't work. It's also important to make sure that you do this just in case you don't have that function on the object you're hitting, otherwise your game will crash. Um, and we'll just type collider dot hit successful and we'll pass in the current weapon dot damage. Cool. Okay, so everything should go to plan. We just need to make sure that we come up to this uh, match in the shoot and actually call that hit scan collision function and pass in the camera collision. After that, we should be good to go. I just once check over this. Yep, I think we're ready. Let's run the game. Okay. Oh, we got a crash. Oh, yeah, okay. So health is uh, int and I've been writing too much JavaScript. So um, I just need to type str. Health, STR health. Okay, and then you can see it's gone. And that's working. So that's how you set up a hip scan weapon. Awesome. And it's not interacting with anything else. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but we can't always see where we're shooting. So it'd be nice to do that. So let's come back over to our project and we'll just create a new scene. And we'll make it a sprite 3D. This is just going to be a simple bullet point, bullet, we'll call it a bullet underscore depug. And under hard assets, I've got a crosshair. That'll do just fine. X marks the spot if you know what I mean. And I'll just make it red. I'm also going to come over to the flags and for billboard, I'm just going to put Y billboard so that's always facing the camera. And I'll save that under weapon resources. Um, not really much to it. I will create a script and also I'll add a timer and I'll put the timer just one second's fine. Connect signal timeout to the script and once that timer times out, I'll queue free. All right, cool. And I will add that scene as a variable here. I'll type var debug underscore bullet and I'll preload and I'll drag that scene over debug bullet. 
just drop that in there like so. And I'm actually going to take those out of the weapon resource folder because that's where we keep all the... Uh... Okay, cool. I've moved those just to make it a little bit neater in my project. So I'll just have to reset that preload. So every time you move this file, you're going to have to re relink that up and drag that back over. So it says tutorial bullet debug. Okay, so now we need to instantiate that. Probably if there's a collision, I'll type var hit underscore indicator equals equals debug bullet dot instantiate. I'll type var world equals get tree dot get root. And I'll just add the child. Hit indicator. And I'll set the transform. So hit indicator dot global translate and it'll just go bullet collision dot position. So that'll show up at the position of the collision. And there you can see it. And they're not disappearing. I suspect that's because I forgot to set that to auto start and they'll start disappearing. So now you'll always be able to see where that hit scan is going. So that'll just help as you're building your game out. You just replace that with a decal when you're ready. Um, and you'll notice where it's showing up in the tree. I, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of dropping it in the root. Maybe we could move it to the world. Um, it probably doesn't matter that much, but I'll come back over to the FPS character and uh, where we're instantiating that, where it says get tree dot get root, I'll just get child and I'll just type zero there, which will be the first node, which is going to be the scene that you're in, you know, the level in most cases. Depends if your game's more complex, but if your game's more complex, I suspect you don't need this tutorial. So, and now you'll see it just shows up in the world. Um, probably not that important, but I just thought it might be important to point out that, you know, to think about these things when you're just instantiating stuff. Okay, that's it. We've done it. Hit scan weapons. We'll do projectiles next. I'll see you next week. Alrighty guys, that is how you do a hit scan weapon. How did you go? If you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section. I will do my best to answer it or maybe someone kind from the community can answer it as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it helpful, I really do appreciate a like and subscribe. And of course, there's always the Patreon, patreon.com slash games if you want to access these videos in advance. Next week we have projectile weapons. We'll be shooting lasers from these guns next. So keep an eye out for that one.